Wow, look at my hair today. Got like a Jimmy Neutron thing going on. Ooh, wow. What's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to Immodernation. So today's video comes out of necessity. I wanted to upgrade my Synology DS214 to Bay NAS server. No, not that Bay. That Bay. I've been on YouTube now for one year and after one year you have a lot of videos which means you need a lot of storage to store all of that information in case you have to come back to it at a later date. But unfortunately I only have room for two hard drives so I need to be able to expand them one at a time without losing any of my important data. I could not find a single guide online telling me how to upgrade the size of a two bay NAS server. Maybe it wasn't obvious enough to me but if I can't find it you guys can't either. So I thought while I was upgrading my server Let's make a guide to make it easier for a lot of you. If you don't know what a NAS server is, it stands for Network Attached Storage. It's a way to move that storage out of your computer and onto the network where it's easily accessible by other computers. And the hard drives that I have inside of this server run in RAID 1, which is a redundancy. It's like you have your original files and then you have a copy of those files in case one of the drives decides to go down. You can check out the video in the upper right corner. Linus Tech Tips did a great example of what RAID means. And they talk about more than just RAID 1, they go on to talk about more exotic RAID options. So for any of you that have worked with NAS servers before, you'll recognize that this guide is not really different than replacing a damaged drive. First thing you want to do is remove the drive from the system. In this case, I picked the second drive. It doesn't matter which one, but I chose to use the first drive to copy over the contents onto the second one. And when you pull the drive out, you'll notice that the server starts complaining and whining. Now, what's specific about the DS214 Plus is it uses hot swappable bays. What does this mean? It means that I can pull the drives in and out and there won't be too much of an issue with the data stored on them. As soon as you put a new drive in, it's gonna ask you to repair the RAID. That happens regardless of whether it's a brand new drive or if it's a drive that you've used before. So if you're gonna pull this drive out, make sure you have enough time to put it back in because it's gonna take hours to rebuild the RAID. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take this drive out of the bracket. So what's nice about the brackets that Synology uses is that they're snap in, so you can simply snap the components off, put the new drive in, and snap the components right back in. It should lock it in place. So the drive that I'm gonna be using in this video are HGST, that's Hitachi. These are six terabyte drives. Oh, yes. Ooh. Oh. Sorry, I need a moment. So we're gonna go ahead and put this drive into the carriage, snap the components back together. Now we're gonna load the drive into the server itself. Now, one of the things that you might have noticed in the Synology Disk Station software is when you go to volume, you'll notice that the manage button is blank. This is because there's nothing to manage when there's only one drive present. Now, as soon as you put in that blank drive, you'll notice that the manage button is now a different color. So now you have the ability to click on it. And when you do, it'll take you through these options, just follow the menus and click OK. Now, realize that hopefully this is the first time you're putting anything on this hard drive. If this hard drive is one that you've used before, be aware that you will lose all the data because it will format the drive the moment you put the drive into the NAS server. All right, so we are rebuilding and we are rebuilding and rebuilding. 
still rebuilding. So this process is gonna take close to, well, for me, it took close to six hours. So I decided to just let this run overnight. All right, and so when we come back to it, we'll notice that everything looks okay. Now, what's interesting is that with traditional RAID, you would not be allowed to combine drives of different sizes. The reason why is because you'd be limited by the capacity of the smaller drive. So if you put in a two terabyte drive with a six terabyte drive, the RAID will be read as as a two terabyte RAID 1. But because Synology has a special hybrid RAID called SHR, we have the ability to combine drives of different sizes, which makes this very easy to upgrade. All right, so now we've got one two terabyte drive and we have one six terabyte drive. I'm now going to remove the two terabyte drive from the first bay and we're gonna insert the six terabyte drive. And you guessed it, we're gonna rebuild again. Yep, so we're gonna spend another six hours rebuilding the other drive. Is there a faster way of doing this? Maybe. Uh, have I found it yet? No. So we're looking at possibly 12 hours to rebuild a server this size. But considering the fact that we're working with two six terabyte drives that are incredibly massive, it should be no surprise that it's gonna take a long time and really your data is important enough that you could wait 12 hours right all right so after six hours we're gonna check it make sure you go into the drive and check to make sure that everything is working and if there are no error messages or no issues congratulations you have now rebuilt your drive all right so now that my drives are rebuilt i have an increased amount of storage room and I'm ready to make you more YouTube videos. So I hope you enjoyed this short guide on upgrading a two bay Synology NAS server. And if you enjoyed the content that you see in this video, make sure you hit that like button below and share the video. I can't possibly be the only one wondering how to upgrade a two bay server. Join the modern nation and get subscribed today by clicking on the subscribe button below. And when you do click on the bell icon inside of that subscribe button to be notified the moment that I release new YouTube videos. You only need to click on it once so it looks like the bell is ringing. You'll see these little marks along the sides of the bell. Now I'm trying to release YouTube videos on a weekly basis and that doesn't always happen. It depends on the type of project that I'm working on and how long that project takes. So it's important that you click on the bell icon so that you get a notification the moment those videos go live so you don't miss a second of my YouTube content. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. And as always, you can find me on social media. I'm available via Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can catch me streaming video games live every Friday and Saturday evening. On Fridays, I stream on YouTube and Twitch. And on Saturdays, you can catch me streaming with fellow streamer Filthy Icon exclusively on Twitch. Be sure to check the timings to my right to find my current schedule. And when you buy products from Amazon, consider using the Amazon affiliate links in the video description below. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you again for watching this video. I hope you've learned something from this guide. Uh, let me know in the comments section if you have, and I hope to see you in the next video.